Good morning, everyone. I'm Dominique Dawes, co-chair of the President's Council on Sports, Fitness, and Nutrition. We will now call the meeting to order. First, I'd like to welcome our fellow chair mem council members and all of our guests here today, as well as those tuning in online. We also have council member Dan Barber joining us remotely. And we are so excited to officially kick off our final annual council meeting of this administration. It has truly been a remarkable six years, and together we have accelerated our mission, impacting millions of individuals and communities nationwide. It has been an incredible journey, and I'm sure my council members would agree with me. And today I am excited to reflect on the council's accomplishments over the past six years and eager to discuss on how we can best chart our path forward to meet our vision of a healthier America. While this may be our last formal meeting, we still have a lot of work to get done. But we have a great team here ready to get the work done, and I know everyone's committed, passionate, and very excited about all the opportunities that lie ahead. Fellow council members, are you guys all with me? Ready. 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 Well, before we get started, one last housekeeping item. Due to the limited amount of time for today's meeting, we will not have the opportunity to take questions from the audience. However, if you have questions or any comments, we encourage you to send them to fitness at hhs.gov. That is fitness at hhs.gov, and one of our team members will be sure to, to respond to you. Now I'd like to turn it over to my co-chair, Drew Brees, who has been instrumental in this council's success. Drew? Thanks, Dominique. It's, uh, it's certainly been a team effort, and uh, we could not have done it without your leadership. Uh, as I reflect on my time as co-chair of the council, um, I think back to when we first came together in 2010 uh, to begin our work together. Uh, I think all of us can agree uh, we've been very fortunate to be surrounded by champions uh, for our mission uh, at the highest levels of office, um, including our first lady and our president. Additionally, I'd also like to personally thank our fearless leader, and when I say fearless, fearless leader, Shelley Full. Um, who has helped us all to harness our greatest potential um, to ensure all Americans are healthy and active. Together, we've been able to address some of our nation's growing health concerns. Uh, we've developed strategies to get kids moving uh, more and eating more healthy uh, and eating more nutritious foods within their schools and their communities. We're also working to combat obesity and physical inactivity. And we are addressing barriers to provide inclusive opportunities for physical activity and sports participation. And this is only a snapshot. As Dominique mentioned, I'm also excited for the rest of today's discussion to not only to celebrate our successes, but to discuss our plans to continue contributing to the well-being of all Americans. Well, we have a lot to cover today, and to help us set the stage, it is my privilege to introduce Dr. Karen DeSalvo, who is filling in for Secretary Sylvia Matthews Burwell. Dr. DeSalvo is the Acting Assistant Secretary for Health in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Dr. DeSalvo? Dominique, thank you so much, and thank you for your service and leadership on, on this council, and I want to thank Drew and, and in fact, the, the Drew and Brittany Brees Foundation for what they have done, and every single member of this council. It's a, it's a legacy of and, and really impressive work over the last six years, and we thank you for the time that you've committed to it. I also want to call out the fierce Shelley Fole, who is an incredible leader and a member of our team in the Office of the, of the Assistant Secretary. She is tirelessly focused on the need to see that uh, everyone in this country, and particularly every child, has the kind of opportunity at health that we want for our own families. And I also want to thank the staff, um, who is just a tremendous group of folks. There are many of them standing against the wall, and, and they're, they're very mission-driven and always have a true north of the people of this country in mind. This council's legacy is now 60 years old, dating back to President Dwight Eisenhower, who noted that the children in America were less fit than those in Europe and set out to change that. 
And as we all know, uh, many times from competition come good things, and I believe this is, this is one of those opportunities that we have taken. Now for the last uh, 60 years, every president has taken a hold of an opportunity to see that young people in this country can have the kind of health and nutritional and physical fitness that we all desire. President Obama and the First Lady um, have done some amazing work with this in the last six years. We're all familiar with the Let's Move program, and in particular, the Let's Move Active Schools program, which now reaches 10 million children across the country. We've also been able to update uh, some of our youth fitness programs and now have the F Presidential Youth Fitness Program that is a new school fitness test and is reaching more than 13 million children uh, all across this country. But our work is not done. We have more to do into the future. And that is partially because we know we're not reaching everyone. Uh, we know that only one in three children today have the kind of opportunity for physical activity. They get the full hour that we recommend in every day. And on average, they're still watching too much screen, whether that's for television or for video games or for other purposes. And so we have work to do to see that they become more act physically active, but also that they have more nutritional fitness. And in doing all of that, we want to make sure that we're helping them have access to the right nutrition guidelines to make sure that my plate is reaching everyone and making sense, that we know the physical activity guidelines and that we can change ac action on the front lines. But we also want to make sure that they have access to quality health care. And there are many ways that we can continue to do that. You know, the Affordable Care Act has changed the world for so many individuals, so many of my patients, so many of my friends and families, and indeed 20 million people in this country now have access to health insurance coverage who didn't have it before. It also comes with it new opportunities to have access to preventive care or not have lifetime caps on your health insurance. And it means that young people up to the age of 26 can stay on their health insurance coverage with their parents, giving more people more access to the kind of counseling and preventive care and treatment that they all need. I want to thank this council and others out there who have worked so hard on our open enrollments. We are uh, coming up quickly on open enrollment four. I know that sounds like a long way away, but it'll be here well before we know it. And so I just wanted to take a moment on behalf of the department and say thank you all for what we have done to give access to care, but let's not let off the gas because we have more to do as we move into open enrollment. And we would ask that if you want to engage and participate, you would let us know. This is going to be an even more challenging year than in the past because there are fewer uninsured to reach and we have to do leverage every opportunity we have with social media, with other channels of outreach to find everybody in this country that is going to have an opportunity to have coverage. If you're interested in participating even of, of doing some online content with us, we're certainly going to be developing our own, but we would look forward to having you all participate in that. We want this to be successful uh, because we still have people to reach in this country were only at 90% and we would consider success 100%. Before I close, uh, we wanted to make sure that we took the opportunity with you all here to, to say a few words about the upcoming Olympics. First of all, um, please know that the administration is supported, supportive of, of the Olympic Games and of course the country of Brazil. And we want to be as supportive of everyone as the Brazilians work to host these games and see that the games take place safely and securely because the world's best athletes will have a chance to compete there. Our work is to focus on making sure that athletes and visitors are going to have the information that they need to take proper precautions and we have issued some guidance uh, about the games in general. First we've released guidance about uh, safe travel recommending for example that pregnant women should not go to the Olympics. And for everyone else, we want people to be thoughtful about how they can protect themselves, not just uh, with respect to the Olympic Games, but in general. And so we want to remind people of three things that they can do to protect themselves, uh, particularly against mosquito bites in Brazil, but even in the U.S. One is using EPA-registered repellents for insects. The second is to wear protective clothing, long sleeves, long pants. And the third is to think about your surroundings, about um, screens and emptying out water and using air conditioning or window screens uh, to keep mosquitoes out. You guys are ambassadors not just to the children of this country and the families of this country, but uh, really to the, to the entire world, especially the sports world. And so we hope that you will use your voices uh, for education and help us get the word out about uh, particularly safe travel to Brazil. 
And so share this information about Zika. Let us know if we can provide you with some more written guidance and, and point you to the information. Uh, we know that we need to do everything we can to support people's efforts because we want to make sure that uh, as the U.S. delegation is heading to the Olympics, that we're working with everybody, that they have the information that they need uh, to be safe. So thank you all for your leadership uh, on this council, for your role modeling and mentorship to improve the health of everyone in this country, and thank you all for using your voices for good. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much for your remarks, Dr. DeSalvo. We appreciate you taking the time to address us today, and thank you uh, for all that you're doing each and every day to improve the lives of so many Americans. Now I'd like to invite up a very special guest to join us, uh, Abby, a national ambassador for Fuel Up to Play 60 from New Hampshire. She's here today to share her story with us. Uh, Abby's extremely active in her school and community. She is involved with cross country, track and field, and field hockey at school. Inspired by her work with her Fuel Up to Play 60, Abby also works with Special Olympics and Girls on the Run. If that is not enough, Abby is also an active participant in her school lunch program and has worked with her team at school to receive over $11,000 in grants to increase school meal participation. Some of the improvements they've implemented include a salad bar extension, a healthy cooking club, and a grab-and-go refrigerator with healthy breakfast and lunch options for students in a hurry. We invited Abby here today to share her perspective on being active and eating healthy. And as a dad, I think it's important for us all to listen to what our kids have to say. Abby's perspective will shed light on some of the same challenges that we hope to collectively address, specifically around the school setting. So Abby, welcome. Hi, thank you. I'm Abby Florence from New Hampshire. I'm a Fuel Up to Play 60 National Ambassador. And I'm here to talk to you more about like my perspective on what the students think about what we should be doing in schools for physical activity and healthy nutrition. In Fuel Up to Play 60 in my school, we have done a lot with both the healthy eating aspect of Fuel to Play 60 and healthy nutrition, healthy nutrition, and then we've also done a lot with the physical activity. For example, with physical activity, we do motivate students through the fitness gram program that a lot of students are involved with around the nation, and then we also have the, we're trying to involve the 100 mile club, that is kind of hard with New Hampshire weather, but <laughs> we're trying. And then we have also been sending some students down and participating in the fun run for our like our younger grades. We have students running. We have many, many students joining the school sports programs. Students love the middle school like competition aspect of the school sports and everyone really loves participating in that. And students also like the healthy nutrition part because we have been using um, the grab and grow breakfast thing. We've also used it during lunch, so we can advertise like um, healthy foods such as parfaits, um, fruits, and healthy lunches like hummus lunches, um, ham and cheese sandwiches with like whole wheat bread. And it's um, the students have reacted very well to it. They have purchased it more often because. Not only do we have it at a lower price, we've also advertised the like healthy aspect of knowing that you're putting healthy foods into your body, and students have really learned that this way of feeding yourself will really, really help your overall um, achievements in school because students have learned through Feel Up to Play 60, lots of students in Feel Up to Play 60, which is really good, we have... Um, advertised how you can really make a difference in your academic career because you learn a lot more, you are way more energized during classes, and it's really, really made a difference in how students react to the, both the program and the idea of being healthy through physical activity and healthy eating. And physical activity has been a overall success in our classes because we even have physical activity breaks, and um, we have, because it's very hard during school to have students take a break during classes. There's always learning and trying to fit an entire school day in, but we've learned that during a, like, RTI, which is 
recess like inside when students can be working on homework. We have students take a two minute physical activity break and their teachers initiate it and like throw a beach ball around or they have them jump roping and it really helps students be more focused for the next few classes remaining in the day. And that has made a huge impact on our school. And yeah, that's it. <laughs>That was awesome, Abby. How old are you? I'm 13. You are so impressive. That is awesome. I wish there were more 13-year-olds uh, when I was younger in my class, you know, being so inspired and such a leader. You were doing a wonderful job. And you, she spoke without notes, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and even Nothing. got the three-minute warning. Even that was impressive. <laughs> and she didn't get nervous. So thank you so much. We're truly impressed uh, with the work that you're doing. And please encourage many of your other classmates to get involved. You're truly making a difference. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, as you know, we just heard from a 13-year-old, Abby is truly being a role model for her, um, her, her peers as well as the adults that you're able to speak to. Um, you know, you're an inspiration to all of us. And as a mom of two girls, and for those of the council members that I've had an opportunity to speak in depth with, all I do is talk about my two girls. And uh, being a mother, I believe mothers are the children's, young children's first teachers in life and mothers are their children's role models. And so it's important that me as a mom, that I'm focusing on what I'm putting in my body and that it's not just what I say, but it's more importantly, what I do. And so uh, again, back to Abby, you're being an amazing role model, inspiring your peers, keep it up. And uh, you know, you're, you're doing a great job. Well, as Drew mentioned earlier, listening to kids is critically important to our overall success. And that is very true. And I'm excited to share that the council has taken this to heart this year with a pilot program in partnership with Fuel Up to Play 60 Youth Ambassadors. The council staff is working with students to learn the youth perspective on our marquee programs. I believe Mark Hurtling, Hurtling is attending the Fuel Up to Play 60 Student Ambassadors Summit later this year, are you? You can't wait. <laughs> well, just don't hurt the kids, right? I feel like he's gonna really, are you gonna push them pretty hard? There's never enough pushing going exactly. on. Down I know. You, know <laughs> you always got to add a little bit more to you it. Always add means, a means push ups. Too. Push ups. Yeah. So, so that's awesome. So it's not the hundred percent will not be enough for Mark. It'll it'll probably be about one hundred and fifteen percent. So kids, look out. Okay. Well, we look forward to hearing from Abby and her fellow Fuel Up to Play 60 student ambassador Anae during our later discussion about charting our work for the next sixty years. But quickly, I wanted to give a shout out to Taylor and Courtney. Are you in the audience? Or Ty Tyler and Courtney? Well, please stand up. We would like to give you a round of applause for your commitment as well. Thank you for what you're doing. You're being role models to your peers. And as I said earlier, you truly are inspiring us adults as well. Well, now I would like to introduce our fearless leader. Everyone's fierce, <laughs> fearless. What else can we say about her? Shelly Fole. She is the executive director of the President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. And Shelly will provide a recap of our achievements throughout the past year and this administration. Shelly? Great. Thanks, Dominique. And thank you to Drew. And really, thank you to each and every council member uh, around this table. And We'll have, we have a couple calling in and uh, a couple that were unfortunately not able to join us, but uh, we're equally indebted to them for, their, uh, for your time, for, for your efforts, for your energy. You've all given your time and your talent, and um, we could not do this without you. So when we, it, you're the epitome of what it means to be a team. So thank you to each and every one of you. It's hard to believe we've been at this about six years almost. Uh, for some of you, a little bit less, depending on when you were uh, appointed, but no less, Im less impactful, by the way. We just made you work that much harder. Uh, so um, it's, again, uh, the time has, has gone so very fast. And as Dom said, we, we are still not done. Um, Please allow me also, as Dr. DeSalvo did, to recognize our team, our, our staff. And um, these, th these folks are tireless. Um, we all know the importance of fielding the right team. So quickly, Joey, Lauren, Meredith, Tasha, Ebony, Ross, Annette, Hannah, thank you. Uh, they're all standing around here. We have Catherine and Carrie are two interns this semester as well, thank you. Um, 
We have, we actually have folks that, that are volunteering here today that either used to work with us or did, did internships. So uh, when we talk about family and team, that's what we mean. We're, once, you're, once you're part of the team, you're always part of the team. So uh, thank you all. But to, to our, uh, our, 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 our team, thank you for your belief in our mission, our work ethic, uh, your work ethic, and, and really doing the impossible on a daily basis. It's kind of fun, isn't it, uh, to do the impossible on a daily basis. So thank you. So as we celebrate our 60th anniversary this year, uh, I think it's also important, and, and we're gonna have a, a celebration event this evening with a lot of uh, former, and as well as our current council members, along with our foundation, who you'll hear from our foundation executive director in a few minutes. Um, so we're gonna have a little celebration a little later on, and, and so we had some folks in town here, and I just wanna mention um, a, a couple folks that we have in the audience this morning. We have Ash Hayes, who's here, who was the executive director from 85 to 89. Ash, thank you, sir. All the way from San Diego. San Diego. Yes. Ash Hayes. Going strong, sir. And I think, is Melissa Johnson here yet this morning? Melissa? Melissa will be here. She's in town. She probably ran into those storms last, last evening, but Melissa Johnson was the executive director in the previous administration under, under President Bush. And uh, both of these folks have been just at the ready for a phone call, for a, for a, a pat on the back when, when you might need it, you know, and a, and a lift up and say, how, you know, how, how did you uh, work through this? How did you um, get the message out? How did you, uh, how, how did you manage, if you will, uh, the council in, in, within um, this government structure that we find ourselves, but yet really try to be out there. And so uh, thank you. Thank you, Ash, and, and I'll thank, thank Melissa later um, as well, but um, just appreciate your, your support uh, so very much. Um, and also want to thank, I would be remiss if I didn't also thank this morning um, and give my sincere appreciation to Dr. Richard Keeler who not only served on the council under four presidents, um, but has been a friend and mentor my entire career. Uh, so to have him here this morning is, uh, is wonderful. Thank you, sir. So some of you may not know that Hubert Humphrey, for, wh for whom this building is named, was a chair of the council. He was a chair of this council under President Johnson. And, and speaking of chair people, another uh, esteemed chair, you guys are in good company, um, astronaut Jim Lovell was a chairman uh, under the council under four different presidents, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, and, Car and Carter. And we actually, we were hoping to get uh, Captain Lovell here. Uh, he's not able to join us, but he sent, uh, he sent a quick note um, as we were in touch with him about the 60th anniversary, and, and he said, quote, it gives me great pleasure to see the President's Council alive and well. My best wishes to the past and present members. Uh, so that from, from Captain Lovell. Um, so great to, to have our uh, folks here. We'll have many more folks here this evening um, to help us celebrate. But uh, I, I, I want to talk a little bit about what we've accomplished uh, in these past six years. We'll talk a little bit more about our 60 years a little later in the, in the meeting today. But these past six years, as we started putting together uh, where we've come and what impact, what true impact have we had? Uh, this is, and, and by the way, council member, these, this is all in your binder, but I, and I'm just gonna hit the highlights. Uh, but as you remember, early in, in the administration, President Obama recognized the role that nutrition plays in, uh, to help individuals to lead a healthy lifestyle. And in 2010, he expanded the council's uh, mission to include nutrition. So we became the President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. Over the past six years, we've worked hand in hand with the First Lady's Office uh, to combat the nation's concern around childhood obesity and physical inactivity uh, through the Let's Move initiative. Uh, together, uh, we support Let's Move in, in many ways. We participated in dozens of events, amplified successes over social media. Many of you have done that, so thank you very much. Uh, and provided inspiration to millions of Americans across the country. And uh, speaking of events and outreach, I couldn't believe this when I, when I saw it. Um, but we've actually, over those six years, believe it or not, between all of you and all of our staff, we've 
attended and been at and engaged in about 900 outreach uh, events, 900, 900. Now, if you knew what our travel budget was, you'd be <laughs> even more amazed, yeah. I must say. Uh, so that, again, is a testament to, to all of you uh, engaging in your communities where you are, uh, sometimes flying to where we need you to be and, and taking time out of your, away from your family, away from your um, profession and, and so forth. So uh, you've really dedicated. I, I, it's, it's an unbelievable number for me for, for six years. Um, so that tells me that we've been out there, we've been in the community. One of our first milestones was when the First Lady challenged us, remember this, to get a million people uh, to do the, the PALA challenge, the Presidential Active Lifestyle Award. Uh, we set a kind of a lofty goal at a million. Uh, it was pretty lofty because only about 10,000 people had ever even heard of it, uh, had ever even signed up for it in its history. And so we just added a few zeros, if, as you recall, um, and said, well, let's go for a million. Uh, most people thought we were crazy. But I will tell you that, again, thanks to all of our partners, many of whom are in this room and, and watching us, uh, we blew that number out at 1.7 million. Remember that? So uh, 1.7 million uh, people. And folks are continuing to log their steps um, and, and join us in not only the, the Presidential Active Lifestyle Award, but our Champions Program as well, um, including Dr. Stephen McDonough, who's platinum. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> He's platinum. All right. Uh, we've, we've developed our long-term solutions um, with like-minded organizations. Again, uh, couldn't do it without all of those partners. Um, in 2013, the council launched Let's Move Active Schools. So specifically for Let's Move, we launched the Active Schools Initiative to help schools integrate physical acti activity before, during, and after school. Since the launch in Chicago, I think Dr. DeSalvo mentioned this, we're actually now at over 19,000 schools across the country, reaching over 10.6 million students on a daily basis, and growing, and growing. Um, so that's a huge, uh, huge undertaking and a, and a huge achievement for us. You also might remember when Dr. Risa led uh, the Physical Activity Guidelines mid-course report, um, which, um, which had a lot of great outcomes, but one of the things that, that came out that really told us we were on this, the right track is that, that the research showed that we really need to reach students where they are, and that was largely at schools, at least during the school year. So our focus on schools during this administration certainly has been right on, and, and that's where we're showing where we can really make the most impact for kids. We also launched the new Presidential Youth Fitness Program, uh, which was, uh, again, a huge accomplishment. Again, talking to folks like Ash and Melissa and others, um, really, really had to dive in about our youth fitness test, which is what most people remember us from, right? Good or bad, that's when I go out across this country, people remember us because of the test, right? That youth fitness test. For some, it was a good thing. For some, not so much. And so we really took a good hard look at this and uh, through our science board, which is also fabulous, um, our science board recommendations, we actually sunsetted our uh, test and its standards, which were 25 years old, by the way. And in its place, we adopted a health-related fitness assessment in partnership with the Cooper Institute and Fitnessgram. Uh, so Fitnessgram's been around for 30 years. You heard our uh, Fuel Up to Place uh, 60, Abby talk about Fitnessgram. And so now we have one recognized national fitness assessment. It's called Fitnessgram. And we couldn't be uh, more happy with our partnership with the Cooper Institute. Uh, in addition to that, with Shape America, uh, which, which uh, brings together the professional development uh, um, side of the equation. I see Paul here, Paul Rodert. Um, CDC, of course, has been there at the, at the ready and is doing our evaluation for us as well. And in addition to our foundation, the National Foundation on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition, who's really helping to garner resources so that we can get the program in more schools. Right now, um, and by the way, the, the, the program really supports physical educators following national standards and grade level outcomes for physical education. So that is really a physical education pro focus program. Uh, and for that program, 20,000 schools and counting and reaching about 13.4 million kids, again, and counting. Um, just think, guys, when your kids get to the fourth grade, they'll be doing the Presidential Youth Fitness Program. And I know some of you have kids or grandkids already doing that. So uh, they have that to, to look forward to, right? 
Um, so, uh, so that potential is to reach 130,000 schools and 55 million kids across the country. That's the goal. So we're, we're on the way. Uh, <clears throat> if, we, uh, if we're successful, this program will empower students to be fit for life thereby setting future generations up for success in the classroom and in life. I want to note, I mentioned CDC, also thanks to the support of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation um, and Health and Human Services here, we are actually uh, conducting a three-year outcome evaluation of that program, of the, of the fitness test. I don't think it's ever been done before, the outcome evaluation, it's a three-year deal, so it's great to get schools doing it, but our kids fitter today than they were last week or last year. That's what we want to find out. So thank you to, to Arda, Robert Wood Johnson and, and uh, HHS for um, doing that and, and CDC is overseeing that program. So that's, um, that's going to be really important as we uh, wind up that three years. Okay. Um, also, you remember, we re revitalized the I Can Do It, You Can Do It program. Uh, for people with disabilities. This is the mentor-mentee program that is done so well in Miami-Dade, but now in 101 sites across the country. That was our 2018 goal, to get to 100 sites by 2018. We already blew it out of the water, now we're gonna double it. So our goal now is to get to 200 sites by 2018. Can we do it, Jane? We can do it. All right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and by the way, that's 101 uh, sites, 33 states, reaching about 400,000 people with a disability. Um, so uh, great work, just, just great work on that. We were ha very happy to kind of revitalize that program and, and get it out there. I uh, want to recognize Dr. Greenberg's work in Miami-Dade. She just last month hosted the 12th annual I Can Do It ceremony for her district, for her school district. There are almost 2,000 students with a disability who are touched by this program in Miami alone, 2,000 alone. And this is the 12th year I've been there a, a few times, uh, and it's an unbelievable experience. So great job, Jane. Uh, we also hosted the first ever White House Summit and Research Forum on Improved Health and Fitness for Americans with Disabilities. Um, this was part of that relaunch and really bringing to the fore the importance of us all addressing uh, people with disabilities. And with that, we also um, launched Commit to Inclusion. And what, what that is, is really encouraging organizations of all natures, organizations, companies, um, nonprofits, government-related organizations, to be inclusive of individuals of all ability levels, period. It's that simple or perhaps that difficult for some. That's what we're trying to do, and now we have, uh, we have technical support for those organizations that want to do just that. And as you can see there, we've got 68 uh, commitments made already. Now we've gone international. Uh, it's really taken off like crazy, and we're very happy to be uh, part of uh, and working with the Lakeshore Foundation, the Global Partnership on Children with Disabilities, the American College of Sports Medicine, and the Institute for Human-Centered Design on that uh, Commit to Inclusion. Um, the work that's been done is, is really, truly incredible. Um, and, and our work doesn't stop there. On that sport pillar, uh, we also joined with Aspen Institute last year to, to launch Sport for All, Play for Life, a playbook to get kids in the game. This is an action plan that outlines strategies to improve access and opportunities for youth to participate. And uh, strategies are being implemented by national and community-based partners across the country. Uh, many of us will be uh, participating in the Project Play, the second annual Project Play Summit tomorrow. Many of you are participating uh, in some way, and so we thank you for that as well. That partnership really allows us to um, work uh, meaningfully in this area of youth sports. I also want to make sure we mention our work um, this, this year in February, or well, really throughout the administration, but in February, we were able to um, partner with the Women's Sports Foundation and the National Women's Law Center uh, in support of the 30th annu anniversary of National Girls and Women in Sports Day. Uh, this important observance led us to hosting a roundtable discussion at the White House, uh, and several, uh, again, several of you participated, and I, I think would agree that that was another great event. And maybe the first, was that the first White House event for your daughter? Um, I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> Quinn, Quinn, yeah, yeah. yeah. Quinn, Quinn got to come. Yeah, I brought my infant to the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so we remembered why we were there, why we were doing what we were doing. So, 
Um, and then just quickly to finish up, um, really looking forward to our, our continued discussions at Project Play. Um, the, we also have an active aging initiative. We don't often talk about it because we are largely focused on on youth fitness and, and nutrition um, because of the, the Let's Move initiative and because of our initiatives as, as well. Um, but we do have an active aging initiative uh, that we partner with the Stanford Center on Longevity, the International Council on Active Aging, AARP, and others, um, as well as our own National Institutes of Health and the Go for Life program. Uh, so we do, we, we do work in that space and certainly, certainly much more needed in terms of emphasis there. We continue to look for new partners. Um, certainly all the time we have uh, such wonderful partnerships and you know, we kind of say we do partnerships for a living and, and um, that, that would be true regardless of our budget, but, uh, but especially when you have uh, a constrained budget, it's, I think it's really important for us to combine resources, combine talents, and to be able to bring all of those to the table. We also worked with Mrs. Obama, remember, uh, a few years ago with Joining Forces. So when Joining Forces came out, we said, gosh, we should have a fitness part of that. And so we called our friends at the American Council on Exercise and the International Health Racket and Sport Club Association, uh, also known as ACE and URSA. Um, and they made awesome commitments to support our military families and so there are thousands of hours of uh, fitness training and uh, hundreds of thousands of free health club memberships that have been given to military families. And so we thank you also for uh, that work and, and that support. All of these accomplishments are really a direct reflection of, of your leadership uh, collectively and, and commitment to our, our mission. Uh, we have a lot for which to be proud. And, and again, as I said, we're not, we're not done. We're gonna, uh, this is for Allison, uh, Felix who'll be joining us later, but we're gonna run through the tape, right? We're gonna, we're gonna sprint to the finish here. And uh, we're gonna have a time later in the discussion to talk about kind of our advice for the next council that is seated in the next administration. Uh, so we're gonna have a chance to do that um, uh, and, and you know, be able to really provide your re reflections there. But until then, um, I, will, I will stop there and, and say thank you again. Uh, it's been truly an honor. Uh, we will continue to serve. We're family now, uh, so we're joined and, uh, in this mission, and, and we will continue. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shelley. Um, man, your passion is evident when it comes to the council and uh, all the programs uh, that the council is involved. In. I know I speak uh, on behalf of all the council. Um, our time has been uh, tremendous. It's been inspiring um, because of people like you, so thank you. Um, I also know I can speak for the council members when I say uh, I'm so proud of what we've accomplished um, under Shelley's leadership, and I'm glad that we've had the opportunity to reflect on those and, and we'll continue to be able to reflect on those as, as the meeting goes on. Next, I'd like to turn the floor over to Chris Watts, Executive Director of the National Foundation on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. Prior to Chris's role at the foundation, Chris served as Managing Director of 4.4 and was instrumental in developing their innovative business model and executing partnerships with nonprofits across the country. Previously, as many of us remember well, Chris led strategic partnerships for the President's Council. Prior to his work in the sports industry, Chris was an engineering analyst at Kimley Horn & Associates, focusing on transportation and sustainable design. Chris, welcome. Excellent, thanks Drew. And again, wanna echo my, my thanks and support to Shelley in this administration. It's been a, um, a journey for sure, as we'll talk about the foundation and how we're gonna take that journey, but we're really proud of the, the legacy that we're gonna be building on and excited for where the foundation comes in to take um, that legacy and really build on it for the future. So again, echo my thanks to certainly Shelley, but also the council members and, and your support and effort and um, focus and passion towards um, this mission. Um, so as many of you know, uh, as Drew mentioned, um, I come from working with the council. And as uh, I think a year ago, almost to the day, um, it was announced here at the council meeting where I was taking the role as the executive director of the National Foundation on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. And from that day and, and over the last year, it's been a, a priority of the foundation, certainly working really closely with Shelley 
in this administration to make sure that the foundation is working in lockstep with the council, that our priorities are the council's priorities, is that we're building um, on this incredible legacy of the past 60 years and ensuring that the impact is more deep, the programs are going further, and that we can really build a sustainable organization to, be, to, to continue the incredible partnerships that have been established, but really strengthen and improve them as we move, move forward. So I think for that context, um, we're really proud of, of the last year, but I think even more excited and um, interested and empowered by where we're going. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more later today um, certainly our friend Rob Shepardson um, will discuss some of the plans that we have for the 60th anniversary and, and our plans for this evening. But um, what we like to say and what I've been saying is that today is really the start of a, a new day for the foundation. Um, with some context and background, um, the foundation was congressionally chartered in 2010 as the only congressionally chartered foundation that really is, is, is there to support national health and fitness priorities uh, with the sole purpose of supplementing and supporting the mission of the President's Council. Um, throughout the years, the, the, the foundation has evolved, and as I mentioned earlier, we're really committed to, to utilizing this 60th anniversary timing and the upcoming election transition to solidify the relationships and partnership with the Council, but more importantly, build that impact that Shelley mentioned, that we saw the numbers that, that she referenced with the programs that the council has promoted and, and, and built really through this administration. Uh, as Shelley mentioned, a lot of them really had little if none resources from the council side without, um, besides passion and incredible work ethic and partnership and ingenuity. And that's really the foundation's role, is to figure out how to take these, these important missions, these important programs, these important priorities, and bring the best of the private sector to support and scale and improve them over time. And I think that's where, where we are today and, and where we want to continue to, to go moving forward. As, as Shelley mentioned, the priority program right now of, of the President's Council and really of the foundation is the, the Presidential Youth Fitness Program. And through our great partnerships at Shape America and the Cooper Institute and CDC, which I think all three are represented here, um, we've been able to reach, um, as Shelley mentioned, estimated almost 25,000 students and 25,000 schools and 13.4 million students. But the goal is, is incredibly in, much higher than that. I mean, we have 130,000 schools and 55 million kids, and we were able to get to that original number through a strategic investment from the General Mills Foundation. They made a commitment to this vision. They made a commitment to this mission, and they've invested $10 million to make sure that this program scales across the country. But although that's an incredible amount of money and we're grateful for those resources, we need a, we need a tremendous amount more to scale, not just nationally, but locally in the communities that meet it the most. And that takes real partnerships. That takes real commitment to, to figure out how to get the schools that you know, don't have access or don't have physical educators and really can get the quality um, of the programs that, that they need. And so as, as the foundation builds and grows and looks to scale our work, we're really looking for those partnerships that are committed to the council's priorities for the long term and are looking to scale and, and support those efforts um, that we have priorities for now. Um, Unlike, unlike um, our friend Caitlin, I did have some notes. Um, but for some additional context for the, for the, the, the council, um, and I, I did have some slides, but I'm not sure if, um, if they're gonna be put up. It's perfect. Um, I did want to reflect and, and, and socialize on, on the foundation's leadership, because this is really how um, our priorities are formed, and, and we form them in partnership with the council. And as I mentioned, we're congressionally chartered, but our board members are appointed um, by the Secretary of HHS through recommendations of the um, leading members of Congress. And these board members reflect and represent um, some of the best of the private sector in business, sports, nutrition, across the spectrum. And with the support of the, and the leadership of this board, um, we work in concert with the Council to understand how can we take these incredible programmatic priorities of the Council but utilize the private sector's resources and expertise and innovations to help support those programs. And that's really the, 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 the purpose and function of our board and leadership, which we're incredibly proud of. Um, as we move forward, we um, have three more spots open to the board, and we're going to be rounding that out in this administration. Um, so we can, our, our, our priority and goal is to ensure that we have a strong and solidified board and leadership function that we can continue and maintain the progress of this council through administrations into the, into the future. And I think 
for many of you in the council, this is, this is your first term. Some, I think Donna, um, you, you were here for the last administration. Um, but uh, it, the progress that we've seen through this administration, certainly through the leadership of the First Lady and through the leadership of Shelley and this council, has been tremendous. And the function of this council, with the support of the board and with the support of our partners, is to continue that legacy, to build upon that progress. So we're, con we're, we're adding upon the success. Well, those numbers are going to continue to grow up and we can sustain and maintain those programs in progress that we don't have a lull, we're not waiting to new council members come in. We can, we can bridge that gap between administrations so when the new council comes in, we have resources, we have, a, we have programs, we have a vision, we have goals that we can plug into and continue to support and shape as the new administration comes in. And so we're, we're excited about that opportunity. Um, I, I, would, I, I would say that the foundation right now is, is stronger than it's ever been. And I think that's certainly due to the relationships that the foundation has with the council and certainly Shelley's um, leadership and supporting that and, and engaging council members in those relationships. And as I mentioned earlier, um, Rob Shepardson and his work at SSNK and his team and supporting some of the vision work that we'll be talking about earlier today. We had the fortunate opportunity to, to collaborate in meetings and try to understand how we can bring some of the foundations and council's work to um, communities that need the most, particularly Hispanic communities and so I had the opportunity to work with Dr. Jane Greenberg and, and understanding some opportunities in Miami and across the country. And we want to continue strengthening that relation between the council and foundation. And so as we bring in new resources and partners and priorities, um, the council and the foundation are, are working together. So uh, certainly open for any questions or, or comments on that too. Thanks. Well, thank you so much, Chris, for the update on the foundation, and always great to have you a part of the team doing wonderful work. Um, one thing that Shelly mentioned earlier that I loved was the focus on fit for life for the youth, and really we're teaching young kids um, healthy and good habits now that will last for a lifetime, so keep it up through the work of the foundation. Now, I'd like to build on the great updates that we have had this far in the meeting. I'd like to turn to Council Member Jane Greenberg, who will moderate our discussion about our journey so far as council members. Thanks, Dominique. And I'm thrilled to be here in Washington, D.C. Um, for our final council meeting. Um, I hope I speak for everyone when I say that this has been an incredible experience and one that provides meaning for me for my day-to-day -day life. As it's our last meeting, the goal of this portion is to actually talk about our experiences, our successes, and, and where we go from here. And we all have those great memories related to specific events we attended or successes about how we've helped to promote physical activity or good nutrition to all Americans. So at this time, we'd like to take a walk down memory lane. And, and I'd like to start again. Um, the accolades will flow, Shelley, because you and the team have, have just been great. And never any further than a phone call or an email away. So thank you again for the vision. And for me personally as an educator on the council, um, this has been my gold medal experience. And not any one particular event, even though I, I've got a few that I like, but just the opportunity to work with the most incredible council members you can imagine. And so many of you I've worked, watched compete, um, you know, been a part of what's changed with Title IX throughout my lifetime. And, and to be a part of this table, for me, uh, among anything else, even maybe the picture in the Oval Office, um, ha has been the greatest experience getting to work with you all. So thank you so much. So um, I know that it seems like a lot of what we've done has been for education. And we believe, as Paul wrote it, Shelley uh, mentioned, Shape America with 50 million strong and let's move back to schools. Being an educator, I've seen the change. And working under an incredible superintendent, Alberto Cavallo, in Miami-Dade County Public Schools, I look at education as so much of a game changer. I remember years ago when I started teaching and coaching, we looked for those kids in the phys ed classes and said, have you tried out for that team? And they said, no, well, you need to. And then I became a high school administrator. The conversations at the monthly high school principal meetings were, hey, how's your football team doing? That's, it, it sports started every principal's meeting. And then as a district administrator for the last 21 years, really get to see the impact of, of what the importance of physical education, physical activity, and good nutrition has done on children. So as I walk down and look at Mrs. Obama's kickoff and let's move and transitioning to let's move back to schools and all the other parts of it, I've seen the incredible impact for me personally in my day-to-day -day life as well as how it actually is making an impact. And, and when you're at where the rubber hits the road and you see the impact, it makes you rise above anything else. So thank you so much for those opportunities and these memories will stay with me for a lifetime. 
Um, this has been the pinnacle of my career, so thank you all so much for making it that. So now I want to open it up to the floor for my council members. Um, and if we're going to start with Dan, who cannot be here in person today, but he did send a short video with his memory. So let's go ahead and look at the screen for Dan. My most memorable moment of being a part of the President's Council for Physical Fitness and Health was when we got a chance to meet the President the first time. Uh, and we all lined up, we waited for him for a few minutes, and I was uh, at the end of a, of a long line of distinguished athletes and, uh, and nutritionists and doctors. And uh, the President, for each one, did a sort of signature handshake uh, and, and quick hug. Uh, and as he was coming down the line, I was getting, for some reason, much more nervous than I thought I would be. So the president walks into the room and walks down the line and has a nice introduction for each of these uh, representatives and gives a very personal hello. Uh, and the moment just gripped me and I, I just let go and gave him this huge bear hug. And I think it shocked him. And in the process, it sort of shocked myself because I ended up being the most uncool I've ever been in my entire life. Uh, but it was a legitimate expression of how I felt about our president at the moment. Anyway, happy 60th anniversary to this council and many more. Wow, that, that's, that's a story to me. Wow, thanks, Dan, for all that. And, and hope you're on the phone and you can, uh, you can hear about that. I'd like to hear from, from my colleagues at the table. Uh, yeah, let's hear about you. some of your most memorable experiences. Michelle? <laughs> I had a, a, a fun moment of, uh, Shelley, I think you remember doing the j jumping jacks on the South Lawn with the First Lady. And I didn't know what my, yeah, the, we b broke the world yes, record, yes. Guinness Book of World Record. And I was wondering like, oh, this is gonna be fun. I could do jumping jacks with the First Lady. They're like, no, no, you're the counter. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> and so it was Al Roker here, there was a, it was one minute, so it was like countdown from 60 all the way to one to zero. And I'm looking at the South Lawn to the White House in front of the First Lady and about a thousand kids on the South Lawn. And here I was like, and we're off. Here was like 60 seconds. Come on, everybody. I was like the cheerleader. And then I got to a point where I was like, come on, First Lady. And I was like, this is so fabulous, thinking that one minute across the country, how many people were doing jumping jacks. And it has something to say about the leadership of the council of Shelley Fole, but also of the president and the first lady, um, really leading and epitomizing a healthy, active family. So that, that's my <laughs> fondest memory. That's awesome. Anybody else wanna jump in on this one? I'll go two if you don't mind, Jane. The first one was, uh, being in the same room with uh, Jason Collier, Alonzo Mourning, and, and Grant Hill, and realizing that I was the shortest person around. I usually don't get that reaction, and, and, and I think it was Dominique that said something like, those guys aren't so tough. The, the, one, <laughs> the, the, the one that I really liked, though, truthfully, was the, the exhibition of teamwork uh, from you. Uh, we, we did a thing in, in Orlando, Florida, where we were trying to get the school districts uh, around Orlando to come together and really uh, generate some interest in the let's move active schools and the fuel up to play 60 and uh, we were having some challenges with getting superintendents to buy in and getting the PE teachers there to, to really contribute and you were the first one that said I'll come up and show you how we did it in Miami-Dade and it was masterful having you and Meredith and some of the other staff there for that because it really energized uh, all the school districts of the five counties around Orlando and that will result probably in a couple of hundred thousand young children uh, reaching their potential in the future. So thanks for that. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, I'd like to forward. add, um, my favorite memory was at the uh, White House Easter egg roll. And for anyone who knows, I love basketball and tennis. Those are my two favorite sports. And um, I was at the station on the uh, basketball court and half of the court was tennis, half of it was basketball. And here I am uh, teaching basketball to kids and in walks President Obama and able to shoot hoops with the president, with kids and Shaq. <laughs> and Shaq is the one guy, um, Shaq and Yao Ming are the two guys that make me feel like a, a kid, because they are so, they make me feel uh, normal. <laughs> um, 
And then one other fun memory was um, at, I think it was the meeting this year or the year before, and we did um, a physical activity break. And I remember I was over there watching, and I got it, watching Misty Copeland stretch. And like, she has such form. She's a, obviously one of the best ballerinas on the planet. Um, and I was like, I'm doing stretching wrong because looking at her, like her form was so perfect. I was just like, wow, that's, that's how you're supposed to stretch. <laughs> to some of us. <laughs> Donna, go ahead. I don't have one particular one, but I have several. One is just being able to go with First Lady to churches around the country and promote faith and fitness and family. Um, I think that that's really important. And has, I've seen a lot of um, success in terms of programs that churches now have in regards to their members being able to be healthier. Um, the other one I would suggest that I think has been very impactful to me was when we went to one of the schools locally here and through the Let's Move program, they started gardens. And I think they were up on the rooftop. I thought that was pretty fascinating. Um, one other was working with you in Miami, and you guys um, developed a program where kids were walking and running daily so that they could actually do a 5K run-walk challenge, which I thought was really cool. And then I'd have to agree with you, Jason, the Easter egg roll is just so special because you have families from all over the world coming here to participate in different activities. So. Those would be my highlights. Thanks, Donna. Thank That's you. great. A Anthony? Yeah, I have a, one special one that really jumps out at me. Uh, it was an honor, actually, for me. Uh, I got the opportunity to go to McAllen, Texas, on behalf of the council, mm -hmm. and, and speak on behalf of Let's Move and Let's Move Active Schools. And I think I was out there for about three days. But to <laughs> try to sum it all up, I mean, I spoke to like nine different schools, and each and every one of the schools just going in, just uh, so inspired by the kids, just to see how excited they were, and uh, just the different activities they were doing to stay active during the day. Uh, I remember going to a couple of them. One of them, we, we dropped by, and they, they were doing, like, dance-offs. And, you know, I tried to explain it to these kids that she, I was telling them, like, I'm, I'm blessed on the wrestling mat, but I don't have dance moves. I can't, I don't know what I'm doing. But, uh, <laughs> you know, walked away with some, some lessons in dance. But I just remember walking into the school and just sharing with the kids but this one little girl, she stood up and you know, she just wanted to say thank you to the council and she wrote me a poem about my mom and I. And you know, I, I still have uh, the poem back home, but I have the picture right here of me and the little girl. And you know, she, uh, she broke down crying in the middle of the poem and you know, I remember just giving her a big hug. She got me teary-eyed, but the last day, um, we ended up going to the high school, one of the high schools in the area. And so we're there and it's not just the kids, but the whole community, the family, we're all getting ready to run a mile. And so I give one last speech, and, and my plan was just to run one lap because I have to go catch a plane. I don't want to get too sweaty. It's super humid outside. But uh, yeah, so I speak, I start running, and she comes up. She starts running right next to me. So we're chit-chatting back and forth. I'm running this lap. The lap, uh, I finish it up, and so I stop. And she looks at me. I was like, well, I, you know, I don't want to get too sweaty. I got to jump on the plane. And she didn't say anything, but she gave me this look like, are you serious right now, you sissy? And... Uh, <laughs> So I ended up running a full mile with this little girl, but you know, it was just, a, just an inspiring time for me, and it was just really neat to see what the council has done, you know, just to inspire these kids, just to see on each and every one of their faces how excited they are and, and how we've, we've left that lasting imprint on their lives. And just thank you for letting me be a part of this council and, and for doing that, just that positive, giving that positive impact back and, and just helping the next generation. It's been an honor. Yeah, and just a follow-up from that, Anthony, that was awesome. I remember they had you going, like, it was literally, it was like two and a half days, and you went to, like, 12 schools and community events. It was amazing. But I'll tell you, McAllen, Texas, eight miles north of the, of the border, um, they are, as I, if I have this right, they're the first school district in the country to not only have all their schools signed up for Let's Move Active Schools, but they've all achieved... Mm -hmm. Um, the Let's Move Active Schools, the, the, the national um, uh, award, if you will, the recognition. So they, in other words, they not only signed up, but they followed through, and every school is now participating in Let's Move Active Schools. They, they have, and they also have, uh, of course, the Presidential Youth Fitness Program. So um, thank you. Yeah, again, it, it's, it's amazing what uh, can happen from uh, your presence. Cornell? Hi. Um, I would just like to say first, I want to just say thank you for allowing me to be on the council. I'm humbled by 
being a part of the council and the relationships that I've made. This has always been a dream of mine. Had no idea, maybe like 20 years ago, wanting to be on the council. Had no idea how it was going to happen. Certainly didn't know that through my connection with the later on the president and the first lady that somehow I would end up on the council. So uh, I am just just excited and elated to have been a part in this, Donna, and so many of you all have said there's just so many memories, you know, in terms of the things that we participated in and the things that we've done. I can remember the first day that we, uh, we did our orientation and we were sworn in. And when they started swearing us in, I was like, are we getting in the military? Because, I mean, <laughs> the swearing in was so serious. And, uh, That's not so I, bad. I, it, no, no, I know. I, know. <laughs> I just wanted to know what I was up for, you know. Uh, but I just, service is a part of my life and just wanted to, to be a part of the service. And, and, and this was like a dream come true in the sense that fitness, nutrition, and the education and bringing that to the country is just so important to me and just being able to be with people that are like-minded and do that. And being a novice at this, hadn't had a chance to do a lot of speaking engagements and things like that. So I was just very raw. They said, send me anywhere, have me do anything. So they said to me, they said, well, we've got this media tour we want you to do. We were doing our pala, and uh, we, we want to get all these people together, and we partnered up with Dr. Oz and Share Care, and it's like, we're going to have you do this thing. And I was like, good, I can do this, I can do this. And they said, we've we probably got between 40 and 50, uh, uh, I guess, outlets that you had to talk to. And I was like, okay, never done this before, so I'm thinking, I can do this. So you're sitting in front of this, like, this, like, this blackboard, and you've got to talk to all these different media outlets, and you've got to sound the same on each one. Six hours later, <laughs> it was pr <laughs> same energy. <laughs> so it was probably the toughest physical thing I'd ever done. I got up from the chair like, like this, and you know, even the president said, you never do that many hours. <laughs> <laughs> but it has just been, uh, as I said, a dream come true, and you all are like the greatest people in council that anybody could ever be a part of, and I just want to say again, thank you for letting me be a part of it. Yeah, thanks, Carnell. Uh, Risa? And then I, I want to also thank all of you for letting me, a non-athlete, uh, be a part of this, and I guess my... Uh, one of the things that has been most rewarding for me, and I know it's going to sound nerdy, but uh, reading the reports that Shelley sends out, uh, in part because... You mean uh, somebody reads them? I do, every word. Wow. And, uh, you know, I remember when people said we couldn't get schools to be more active uh, because they had too much to do and they were too burdened, and, and I think that everyone uh, around this table has worked hard to make that uh, to dispel that. And just seeing the numbers has really, really inspired me. And I think the other thing I want to just mention that others have mentioned is, is the, the egg, Easter egg roll, because apart from everything else that goes on there, you see all of the people around this table coming together to make sure that all the kids, no matter whether they have any challenges, uh, feel a part of that. And when you see them participating, despite whatever challenges they have, it's really inspiring. Thank you, Risa. Caitlin? Thanks, Jane. Um, I also want to thank Shelley. I mean, you, you're just a tireless champion for everything that you do, and we're so lucky to get to work with you uh, day in and day out. You just make tremendous change, and I'm just grateful to have had the opportunity to work with you in the council. Um, you know, I have to echo Cornell too. It's been an incredible honor for me to, to be a part of this. And there's so many great memories. One of sort of the sillier memories for me is sort of bobbing and weaving in that activity zone with Donna cheering me on as I'm going through the obstacle course. That was pretty special, diving onto that mat, feeling good about it. Um, but there have been so many impactful moments as a part of this council. I think uh, for the National Girls and Women's in Sports Day celebration, the roundtable that we had at the White House was really, was really amazing. And Dominique, you know, you brought your daughter and you mentioned that earlier but it really was it was such a powerful moment to have so many girls and women in the room for whom sports had had such a tremendous impact and we got to appreciate that together and share our stories and think about ways that we can extend those opportunities to everyone and that was just a that was such a, a huge day um, for me and I think for so many of us and just generally I mean we talk about impact but you see it from the numbers and you hear it from, from people like Abby, thank you so much for sharing your story because that just shows us, I mean, every single person is a big part of what we do here and we need to continue to keep sharing those stories because they're so inspiring and they're gonna get all of us across the finish line breaking that tape together. So I'm just so thankful for the opportunity. It's been wonderful to work with all of you and Shelly, thank you again. 
Dominique? Um, I don't have one particular memory um, that comes to mind, but first, the council has been amazing. You guys are truly inspiring your commitment. Um, Stephen, no one's going to catch you, and Jane, no one's going to catch you. I mean, just mm -hmm. you don't understand how uh, tirelessly they have been uh, committed to this cause. Um, you guys aren't slackers, though, either. Um, <laughs> but just it's pretty impressive. But last night, I think what comes to mind when I think about the council, last night I was having a conversation with my husband, and he was saying, oh, you should go speak at this school or this or that. And my husband's a school teacher, so um, he's always trying to get me to go out and speak and inspire. And I say, I always say to him, no, I, you know, that's not my calling right now. You know, I was a gymnast. Now I'm a full-time mom. This is, you know, this is where I'm supposed to be. And he reminds me um, the impact that we can all make and how we can touch people's lives. And I think, you know, no, I mean, there's not really an impact I can make anymore not wearing a leotard. You know, I can speak and inspire, but no, I need to be home. I need to be home with the kids. And he made it very clear to me the work that I've done with the council, the work that we all do speaking at schools truly does make a difference. And we're inspiring people, and that is our calling. And uh, at the National Girls and Women in Sports Day meeting, it was a blessing to have my little infant there, Quinn, who's now crawling upstairs at eight months old, so she's definitely going to be an athlete, yay. Um, but there was a Paralympic athlete that came up to me at that meeting, and she seemed a little nervous around me, and I'm like, I am not intimidating, trust me. And she then started weeping, and she had said to me, hey, you're the reason why I, I walk, that I learned how to walk again. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she said that her physical trainer that was helping her walk again after... Um, an accident, had been a huge fan of mine and had like a picture or a poster and said, I want you to be motivated like Dominique Dawes and determined like Dominique Dawes. And truly, Dominique Dawes is not that cool. I know I speak in third person often at home. But I was just, I was just, I felt so touched that she shared that story with me, that she was inspired by her physical trainer that was such a big fan to then want to take that step. And she's walking and walking strong and she's a teacher in the Maryland area. And so I just want to say that it has been a blessing to be on this council, um, to know that we can still make an impact, even though we're no longer on the ice, even though you are still on the football field, so keep it up. But even though we are not, you know, for those of us that are, at, that are athletes, even though our careers are behind us, there's still um, such a large impact that we can make. And to have this opportunity to be on the President's Council has truly been um, a gift to come true and a, and a gift from God. And I hope we all stay committed once we walk away from the council to realize the impact that we can all continue to make to help people's lives become better. So thank you for that. Thank you, Dominique. Drew? Um, it's it's, it's uh, really just to contribute to what everyone else has, has been able to speak about. Um, it really has been a tremendous experience. Um, and as I think back to uh, the many, many students, uh, the many, many health professionals, uh, fitness professionals, PE teachers, uh, you name it, that I think we've all had the chance to be around and, and have some pretty um, unbelievable experiences with over the last um, well, six years, um, it's, been, it's been awesome. Um, if I could tell a funny story, um, uh, I'd say early on in, in uh, my time as co-chair of the council, uh, I had the chance to fly up actually during the NFL football season to uh, film a uh, Let's Move and NFL Play 60 commercial uh, on the White House South Lawn with uh, President Obama, uh, Troy Palamalu, and DeMarcus Ware. And so, again, this is mid-season. We're kind of flying up there on, on uh, the off day, which there is no off day, really, but we kind of made room for that one. Um, and the, uh, the design was during the commercial was that, you know, we were only going to have very limited time with the president. Obviously, his time was precious, but this has been certainly a cause that uh, for President Obama and the First Lady has been um, uh, a great priority. And the reason that we've been able to progress so much over the last six years has been because um, of them championing so many of these programs and causes and really founding many of them as well. So we had this chance to um, basically get out there and run a football play, which was going to be DeMarcus Ware coming and trying to sack me <laughs> and President Obama being my receiver covered by Troy Palomalo. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good two-on-two -two little matchup we got here. So um, 
I had heard about some of uh, the president's uh, athletic endeavors, um, that he's uh, quite the basketball player and um, obviously a big sports fan. Um, talks about his Chicago teams a lot, which we kind of had to stay away from that. But um, he's a big Bears fan. But uh, so we kind of set up the whole shoot to where he's going to be running across the middle. Troy Palomalo is going to be coming over his back. I'm going to be throwing the ball as DeMarcus Ware is, is trying to hit me. And um, there's, there's hands that are kind of flying up. And it's one of those like, OK, you got you to fit this thing in there. And we only have time for like one or two takes. So <laughs> pressure's on. And they give you a brand new football. And so the ball's slick. And you're just thinking, oh, no. I'm not necessarily worried about me throwing it. But I'm going to have to fire this thing in there a little bit. And the president is going to stick his hands out there. And if this thing slips through his hands, we're going to have a broken nose on the White, on the, on the White House South Lawn. And it's going to be somebody that nobody wants to see with the broken nose. So um, thankfully, kind of fired it in there, got it where I wanted it to, and the president just plucked it like he'd been there before. Um, so I, I got to say, it was one of the most impressive catches <laughs> I've ever seen. Um, I wanted to sign him up right there, but he would not abandon his uh, Chicago Bears. He's a loyal guy. So um, that, was, that was a great experience, obviously, to go with so many others. But... Um, very thankful for all of them. Thank you. I, I think you all can see why we say we've had such a great council and a great time together by sharing these stories and experiences, so thank you. And we, we know that um, the First Lady has been one of our strongest champions to further the work of the President's Council, and as we all know, Let's Move started in 2010. And it was a very aggressive goal to try and change the obesity, the childhood obesity epidemic within one generation. So on your take, how do you think we're doing with that? I think we've heard the impact in the schools. I think we've heard the faith-based communities, uh, the, the general population. How, how are we doing and what, what do we need to do? You know, I, I, I feel like the awareness and education is reaching an all-time high in regards to our ability to communicate that. I think the thing that will always be a challenge is the affordability and accessibility of healthy food um, for kids. Um, and so I, I think that, that challenge is, is always going to be there. So what, what, um, what are we able to afford to provide in schools? And what are these kids and families then able to afford when they're on their own? But I think the more that you're able to educate them and um, give them access to, I think the more motivated they become to do whatever they can to make that a part of their, their routine and, and their habits. And I think, Reese, I'm going to ask you with the culture of health, what, what's your take on how we're doing in making these changes? Well, there's no question that we've made progress. Um, in our youngest children, we're seeing obesity rates go down. Um, and, uh, but we, we know that the progress is uneven. In many communities, they're sadly still going up. And so I think what, one of the things we've got to commit to is to really keep the... Uh, momentum going and to keep it going in all of our communities, uh, especially making sure that wherever kids are, whether it's in preschool or school, after school programs, they're being exposed to good nutrition and the expectation that they're going to be physically active. And I think if we can continue that momentum, uh, we'll continue to make progress in all of our communities. Thank you. That, that's incredibly important. Cornell? Just to bring together what they were both saying, I think we've done quite a bit. I think one of the main reasons is, as Drew said, it, it's now like something that everybody talks about. And I think that's what was needed first. You know, you first get the conversation started. And then, you know, we now have them moving. And I think one of the greatest things that we were able to do with, with Pala and Let's Move and things of that nature is to say that, uh, you know, one time someone said to me, well, you, 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 I can't afford to go to the gym. And I said, it's less move, not less gym. So what I mean by that is this is about moving. It's about being active. And it says, you know, play forever. And the more people are empowered with that, and I think we've done an excellent job with that. And certainly we want to make sure, as we used to say, we want to reach everyone. And Certainly, the, 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 the food thing is something we're still trying to factor in and figure out. And I think the White House Garden and things of that nature has inspired so many ways that people can do that. But one of the things that we do know, and I think everybody 
uh, agrees is that uh, until we can figure that out, we want to keep moving. So I think we're, we're doing fine with that. Rob? Yeah, I, <clears throat> I was uh, fortunate enough to have a role <clears throat> at the very beginning of, of Let's Move. And uh, uh, looking back on it, the, the fact is a lot of these programs sometimes really um, don't evolve and accelerate the way Let's Move has. And, uh, and it's extraordinary. And I, I think the fact is we've seen, and many of you have told anecdotes and terrific stories about it, in our context with the council, but that Americans, American families, people uh, have a desire for this. There's a demand for it out there. And I think one of the successes in leadership really with the, by the uh, First Lady um, is, uh, uh, is aggressively communicating that, but also looking at this in a comprehensive perspective looking at it through the public sector, also really looking at partnerships in the private sector who also see the need for this, and they are listening to their consumers as well, and their public, and um, uh, I think it's been an extraordinary, holistic way to go after this. I think that's one of the reasons why there's been such success. Thank you. In, in pulling all this together, I think you can see that from, from this council, we've made incredible strides with physical education, physical activity, having physical education now named as part of a well-rounded education. In 2010, when the name nutrition was added to the name of the President's Council, fitness, sports, and nutrition, we've seen we've made incredible impacts on getting persons with disabilities engaged in physical activity so that they'll no longer be sitting on the sideline. And Michelle, you've done incredible work with the Special Olympics, so thank you for being the representative at the World Games. And we know that in active aging, we've also seen great work that uh, Curtis Pride and Dr. McMack has done. And we just want to thank everybody for your input and for the vision, knowing that, you know, together collectively, we, we've tried to make a change and we are all committed to continuing to make a change. And thanks to this administration for allowing us the, the opportunity to impact not only those young men and women looking to go into the military to ensure that they, their fitness levels will keep our, our shores safe, but um, moving forward and moving on to next steps. So again, thank you all so much for um, leading us, Dominique and Drew, and Shelley again for your leadership. Thank you, Jane, for leading this important conversation. Uh, and thank you to all the council members for your uh, input and reflections. Now I'll turn the floor over to council members Cornell McClellan and Donna Richardson, who will lead us in an activity break because active adults, <laughs> as well as active kids, do better. <laughs> so can we cue the music? We're going to make this fun. Yeah. Please, everyone participate. So the reason we have this activity break is we want you to do the same thing in your everyday lives. We don't want you to sit like five and six hours at a time. You got to get up and you got to move. You got to get up from that position, from that low gravity state and get the body moving. So what we're going to do today is just kind of stretch you out just a little, get you moving. So we want you to start just kind of moving in place. Are y'all ready? I can't hear you. Are you ready? Come on, put your hands together. Okay, we're going to bend these knees a little bit. So I'm going to ask you to do a two-legged squat and then an 80-20 squat to kind of just loosen those legs up. So just going back in your chair, we're just going to sit down about three or four times. So let's sit back and sit up and down.
Let's move! Let's move! Woo! 